Here at the uh, Global Midwest Alliance Food Conference, uh, the keynote really talked about private politics and how that is bypassing a lot of the normal regulatory action that's taken place in the past. How would you describe uh, private politics and how they've advanced to where they are today? Well, that's, it's a new term calling private politics, but this has had a major influence on the food industry nationally and globally in terms of private standards. And that has become uh, where uh, companies are interested in protecting their brands, so they want to make sure that they raise standards higher than what the, perhaps the government might allow, or that they find that the normal regulatory procedure or codex procedures are too slow and they want to take action now. So they develop these private standards and then expect anybody that who is going to, uh, to be a supplier to meet those standards. One of the topics today were how international events can sometimes get wide press coverage and then actually lead to groups getting together to enact private standards. Can you talk a little bit about how this happens internationally? Yes, this actually has happened in a, in a process called the Global Food Safety Initiative having to do with food safety where it was actually in Europe where they had some problems, food safety problems that impacted many of the brands where it was actually the retailers got together and said here are the standards we're going to develop that are going to be uniform and we expect our suppliers, the food processing industry, to meet these. That has since expanded uh, to the point where now the food uh, processing industry, manufacturing industry, is also part of this process and the whole idea is to create uniformity in expectations for food safety across the globe not just in any one particular country. So when, when events uh, internationally affect a public opinion leading to new standards groups and so forth, how should companies deal with this or how are they dealing with it when you have government regulations and you also now have many private groups setting standards? Well, that becomes a tricky proposition for them, especially if private standards would be in opposition to what the local regulations would be, depending on what the what the uh, country is. Uh, I, what they have to do is be quite proactive in trying to match as best they can what their sta private standards would be or what they can actually adhere to in the country and with their regulatory system in that country. And so that obviously takes a lot of expertise to look specifically at a country they want to be in the market and then match that up with what the rest of the industry is expecting in terms of private standards. Now one interesting topic today, uh, you know, whenever anybody goes into a supermarket and you see all the lists of chemicals on food, uh, there are lots of groups that are anti-chemical or saying certain chemicals are good or bad. You made an interesting point about, you said, well, uh, sodium bicarbonate are in tires. Uh, just because something is in a product uh, that uh, is not food doesn't make it bad. How do you recommend that the country and people should deal with uh, the issue of what chemicals are safe and what aren't safe? Well, the first thing is that we are all chemicals. I mean, everything has a chemical name, and so don't be put off by the name by itself. That's the first thing. Secondly, I think you have to look at how the chemical is used in context. And I used the example of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda, used in many different manufacturing processes, but that doesn't mean that it's not safe in foods. And the third thing is the adage, the dose makes the poison. In many cases, these ingredients are used in such minuscule amounts that they have really no public health impact whatsoever. Now the consumer doesn't know that, but I think the food industry must, must be much more aggressive in being transparent, sharing this information, putting it in context for the consumer so they don't have to do it. And lastly, there have been cases in the past where there have been foods taken off the market and so forth that were deemed unsafe. How do you think moving forward, as you mentioned with transparency, those types of things can get put behind and, and companies can go forward and be more transparent and trusted? Well, the, the, the key thing is to use science as the true compass, the true north of what actually is acceptable and what isn't. Now, that's not the end of the game because, you know, people's sentiments uh, play into this as well. But I think what co companies need to do is be very aggressive in making sure that if there is a safety problem, they recognize it, they deal with it immediately rather than trying to make excuses of, you know, why they've held on to it or why it isn't them. Uh, those companies that have maintained their brands have sometimes removed products off the market, even if they weren't involved, just to save the perception that, that they were not hiding anything. Great. Well, thank you very much.